Hi Gemini, this is your weekly tarot reading. We'll have five separate spreads in this weekly's reading. We'll have a spread on new love, a separate spread on love and an existing relationship or marriage. I'll then do the X spread. After that, we'll talk to you about your work, your business, and your finances. And at the end, we'll see what you're not expecting to happen this week. Please like, share, and subscribe to support this channel. This first spread is a new love this week. We have the Six of Pentacles, clarified by the Six of Wands. We have the King of Cups, uh, clarified by the Ten of Cups. We have the Star in the potential outcome. We have the Hierophant with the Knight of Cups and uh, the Wheel of Fortune. And we have the Queen of Cups on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with a Water Sign, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. We also have Aquarius, Taurus, and Sagittarius on the table. I usually go with a King or a Queen or both if one or both show up. And yes! We have the King and the Queen of Cups. Um, yeah, and uh, you know what? I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> uh, when I was done laying down the cards, I looked it all over, and the first thing that came out of my mouth was, Aw, this really does look like aw. <laughs> King and the Queen of Cups. You know, I usually call this the ultimate love couple, right? This is when two people. Uh, speak the same love language. This is when people finish each other's sentences. This is so romantic, so cuddly, so fuzzly. You know, and we've got two commitment and marriage cards on the table. We also have the Knight of Cups in the potential outcome right there in the middle. Right, and it feels like an equal give and take. It's just perfect, Gemini. It really is. All right, if you've been wishing or hoping to um, meet the, the love of your life, to meet your ultimate love car in the partnership type of a deal. You know, this is it right here. Alright, this is, that wish is being granted. Alright, the Six of Pentacles, the first guy that came out. This card could be a card of a choice, you know, but um, this is also a card of an equal give and take. You know, very balanced out type of a connection. And that's exactly what I think it is. I don't think it's a choice. Well, granted, we all choose to be in relationships or marriages. But in this case, since we have the King and the Queen of Cups, this is an equal give and take. You guys are equal partners. Very loving, ultimate love partners. Right? And uh, the Six of Wands, clarifying the uh, Six of Pentacles, is a card of victory and success. Okay, it's also a card of attention. So it's going to feel like a win-win for both of you. Both of you are winning here. Right? And uh, you definitely have this person's full and uh, undivided attention. For the reading's sake, Gemini, I assume you're the Queen of Cups. Just to make it easy for myself. But you can assign the roles as you wish. You could be the King or the Queen of Cups. We got both of them here. So we got this King of Cups coming into your life. They're clarified by the Ten of Cups. Right? The Ten of Cups is often referred to as the happily ever after card. It's the best card when it comes to emotionally fulfilling relationships or marriages. It's a family card. If having children is still an option for you, the two of you could definitely have children together. It's just a beautiful card, right? The star in the middle could be an Aquarius you're dealing with, but the star is a wish come true. Something people usually wish for or hope for for a very long time. That's what I was referring to when I was saying if you've been wishing for the ultimate love partner, that wish is being granted, right? In the potential outcome, we have the Hierophant with the Knight of Cups and the Wheel of Fortune. The Hierophant could be a Taurus you're dealing with, but the Hierophant is a card of something traditional like a committed relationship or marriage. It's also a very spiritual card. So you're connecting with this person on so many levels. The Knight of Cups in the middle could be a water sign after all that you're dealing with. But the Knight of Cups is the most romantic knight out of all for nice. The Knight of Cups is often referred to as the knight in the shining armor, Prince Charming. So yeah, there's just so, so much love here, Gemini. So much love. It's love overload. The King and the Queen of Cups, the Ten of Cups, the Knight of Cups. You know, and the, the Wheel of Fortune right next to the deck could be a Sagittarius you're dealing with, but the, the Wheel of Fortune, this is the two of you taking it to the next level, right? The, the Wheel of Fortune, for some of you, perhaps it's a fortunate turn of events, especially if you've uh, been dealing with uh, people who don't know what they want, or people say, oh, let's just play it by ear and never goes anywhere. I think with this person, is going to be like an instant connection, instant chemistry, right? The King of Cups is clarified by the Ten of Cups, that's what they're coming in with and uh, I think you're going to be on board with the cards that we have on the table especially the cards in the potential outcome right two commitment and marriage cards with cards like that it's not really a potential outcome I see the two of you committing to each other just so so much love did I mention it's so loving <laughs> lovey-dovey yeah 
I think I did, but I'm gonna say it again. Yeah, I'm not even gonna do an extended for you, Gemini. This looks awesome. Really happy for you. Congratulations. Gemini, if you are already married, or if you're in a relationship to spread it, so you have Death, clarified by the Hermit, and the Eight of Swords. Uh, we have the Magician, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Ace of Swords on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with an Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Scorpio, or perhaps even another Gemini, but you're probably dealing with the, whatever your person's zodiac sign is, whatever your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your significant other zodiac sign is, right? It feels like you are changing your mind about something, and it could be, for most of you, you, you you need to go through some kind of a thought process and as a result of that pro thought process perhaps with with your person's help you're changing your mind let me give you a couple of examples perhaps you've got money in the bank and you've been uh, um, putting in putting it into CDs CD accounts but this time when CD when it's time for you to withdraw the money instead of putting it back into that same CD, you're going to invest it into something else. This is just an example. For others of you, perhaps you are uh, thinking about purchasing a house, right? And perhaps prior to that, you thought that you would never purchase a house you always, because you want to live in an apartment. This time, you will change your mind and you'll purchase a house. Um, that's just an example. But I do see you changing your mind. I do see you going through some kind of a transformation. And you're going to try something new. Right? So yeah, here we go. The death card. The first card I came out could be a Scorpio you're dealing with. But that is a card of transformation. It's classified by the Hermit and the Eight of Swords. The Hermit could be a Virgo you're dealing with. But the Hermit is a card of somebody who is going within, doing some soul searching, going through, going through some kind of a thought process. Right? And uh, the Eight of Swords, Clapping the Hermit, again, this is somebody who is stuck, trapped in, trapped in their own thoughts. Alright? So, together with the Hermit, this is you going through some kind of a process, thinking process, right? And as a result of that, you're changing your mind, or you're just naturally uh, progressing, naturally evolving with the Death card. So, when you come out of that space with the Hermit and the Eight of Swords, you will change your mind. Okay, the Magician in the middle is, is actually one of your cards, Gemini, that's you. And at the same time, the Magician is a card of taking action, right? The Knight of Pentacles, right next to the deck, you could be dealing with an Earth sign towards Virgo Capricorn, but I think this has to do with something long-term or something financial, or both. Investing into something or purchasing something, right? The Knight of Pentacles, it could be you, you know, putting a down payment on a house or an apartment. This is you investing into something. Right? But this is something new, or a new approach, new way, okay, after that transformation. With the Ace of Swords on the bottom of the deck, this is a card of clarity, and at the same time, I think that's also you being very decisive, taking action, just like the Magician card. I hope that makes sense, Gemini. Alright? Cool. Let's see if anybody comes back from the past for you, uh, Gemini, this week. Keep in mind, it could be somebody from a couple of months ago, a year ago, or a couple of years ago, so it doesn't have to be the most recent X. We have the Ace of Wands, clarified by the Eight of Cups. We have the Devil, clarified by the King of Wands. Then we have the Five of Swords and the Four of Cups on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with a Capricorn or a Fire Sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Um, whatever their Zodiac sign is, um, you're definitely not taking them back, right? The King of Wands in the middle clarifying the Devil. So it could be a fire sign. We also have the Ace of Wands, a fire sign indicator. So Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, or perhaps this person, um, you know, is full of themselves, right? The King of Wands could be who is a narcissist, somebody who you know, likes to be in the center of attention, somebody who is like a social butterfly, right? The Devil could be a Capricorn you're dealing with, but the devil is a card of temptation, it's a card of lust, right? So I think they're coming back just because they just want to get busy with you behind closed doors, if you know what I mean. The Ace of Wands is a, is a good indicator of that. But with the uh, Five of Swords right next to the deck and the Four of Cups on the bottom of the deck, I think this is you seeing right through this person, right? You will see right through them. With the Five of Swords, this is you slamming the door into this person's face, having a few words to share with them, the words they're not going to appreciate. And uh, the Four of Cups, it is a card of a rejection. So, yeah. You're sending them back to the past where they belong. 
Let's talk about your work, your business, and your finances. Uh, Gemini this week. We have the Seven of Pentacles, clarified by the Two of Swords. We have the Emperor, the Two of Cups, and uh, the Wheel of Fortune on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with a Sagittarius or an Aries or any Zodiac sign. Let me talk about what we have at the end. We have the Two of Cups and we also have the Wheel of Fortune. The Two of Cups, when it comes to work, business, and finances, this is my handshake card. And what I mean by that, it could be literally a handshake between you and somebody else, or it's some kind of an agreement that involves paperwork. It's some kind of a partnership or an alliance, right? Or it could be a contract, or it could be a new job. It could be a promotion for some of you. Speaking of promotions, the will of, I mean, yeah, the, the emperor in the middle is a, a boss figure. So it could be you who is being promoted, right? Or it could be your boss or your future boss they're deciding something when it comes to you. Perhaps they're also promoting you or they're giving you a raise. Or if you're waiting for um, a job offer, perhaps you already went through a bunch of interviews. This, this is the person who is in charge of uh, choosing between you and perhaps other candidates. Right? In the beginning, we have the Seven of Pentacles, clarified by the Two of Swords. This is a, the Seven of Pentacles is a card of waiting. I think you are waiting for a decision. The Two of Swords is a card of a crossroads. So there's somebody here thinking about this, either hiring you or promoting you or giving you a raise or granting you a contract if you're on your own business, right? And uh, I think you got it. You got it. Again, with the Two of Cups, this is a handshake, right? That's you shaking hands with somebody else, uh, you know, signing paperwork. The Wheel of Fortune on the bottom of the deck is the start of a new cycle. Whatever it is you're waiting for, you got it, all right? Let's see what you're not expecting to happen uh, this week, Gemini. We have the Seven of Swords. We have the Queen of Pentacles, clarified by the Page of Cups. Um, we have the Four of Cups, clarified by the Lovers. And uh, we have the Five of Cups on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with an Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. What you're not expecting is this Queen of Pentacles, who screwed you over in the past. They're going to reach out to you. They will apologize to you. But uh, you just can't forgive and forget. Perhaps it's been too many times they did it to you. Right, so speaking of what they did to you. The Seven of Swords, the first card that came out, this is a card of a cheater. It's a card of a deception. It's a card of a thief of the uh, tarot deck. So they either stole from you, they cheated on you, it could be a love interest, right? Or they stabbed you in the back, they lied to you, um, they promised you something, but they never deliver it. Right, so here they are with uh, the Queen of Pentacles, the next card I came out is clarified by the Page of Cups. The Page of Cups is a card of an apology and perhaps even a compensation. Right, so the Queen of Pentacles could be an Earth sign towards Virgo Capricorn. And um, no, you're not, you're going to say thanks for the apology, but thanks but no thanks. The Four of Cups, the next card I came out, this is you rejecting them. And uh, the Lover is clarifying the Four of Cups is your major iconic card, that's you. It's uh, the only major icon card on the table, right? So that's you rejecting them. And be all of this is because of that Five of Cups and uh, the Seven of Swords associated with it. The Five of Cups has always to do with the past. So you just can't forgive and forget. Perhaps, like I said, for some of you, they've done it too many times. Or if there was just one time, it was just something really, really bad. All right? So, yeah, that's what you're not expecting. And that's what I have for you. Uh, Gemini for this um, reading for this week. If this video resonates with you, please like it. Please also share and subscribe. And uh, other than that, Gemini, have an amazing week.